Hey everyone, my name is Jake and welcome to Mobot HQ. Mobot are the leaders in robotic lawn mowing in New Zealand. We have over a thousand machines in the field, but what we've found is our customers buy these to save time and money, but at the end of the day, it's all about the finish. So I've been working at Mobot for a year and I've installed over 200 machines uh, of all shapes and sizes. What I've found over the past year is that us at Mobot, we can install the machines for you, or even better, you can install them yourself and achieve a lawn like this. So today, I'm going to be giving you some tips and tricks on how you can install it yourself. Before I go through all these tips and tricks, let's understand how this technology works. All wire-free machines are installed using RTK technology, which I'll go through now. This involves a reference station, which will be mounted on top of your property as high as possible so that you can see a clear vision of the sky and connect to those satellites. Another piece of the jigsaw is the machine, which has an RTK module on top, which will need to see the sky as well. So both the reference station and the mower will work together by talking to the satellites and then the mower and the reference station will talk via radio frequency. At a high level, this is how all wire-free robotic lawn mowers work. And before we head outside, the last piece of the jigsaw puzzle is the charge station. The first thing you want to do with your Husqvarna reference station is get it on the roof. We recommend getting an electrician to do it for you. You can pop it on this extendable pole so it can see more of the sky. With your Husqvarna reference station, you can connect as many machines as you want within a 500 meter radius. As important as it is to have the reference station see as much of the sky as possible, it's so important to keep these secure because if the reference station moves, the map will move and it will be inaccurate. It's important to note that with the Husqvarna mowers, you'll only get this piece. So you have to supply this from any building supply shop. That's why we recommend getting your electrician to do it for you. So once we've got our reference station on the roof, what we want to do is run our 20 meter low voltage cable down through the ceiling to the transformer, which then goes straight into a plug socket. So once we've plugged the reference station in, it will flash green. And then once it turns solid green, we're all good to start our installation. So now we've got our reference station installed with a solid green light. Now it's time to get our charge station set up. So with your charge station, you want it on a nice flat surface so it can reverse out into the open. And then you've got your low voltage cable here. It goes into the transformer, which then goes to your plug. So once we've got the three key components in place, we've got the reference station on the roof with its green light. We've got the charge station on a flat piece of ground plugged in. And then we've got the mower inside the station. So the mower we're going to be working on today is the Husqvarna Automower 550 EPOS. So EPOS stands for Exact Positioning Operation System. So the EPOS platform is used across all of Husqvarna's wire-free automowers. So this means that this 450X Nero here uses the same EPOS technology as that 550 EPOS over there. So the tips and tricks that I'm going to be teaching you today apply to all of the wire-free EPOS machines. So the final piece of the puzzle that brings all of these key components together is the Husqvarna Automa Connect app that you can download on your phone. This enables us to Bluetooth to our mower, which allows us to install it. Okay, so now we're ready to bind everything together in the Automa Connect app. So we start with binding the mower to the app, then we go to the reference station, and then we go to the charge station. You've opened your Automa Connect app, um, we can then begin connecting to the mower. Um, it should be in pairing mode. So if we click 550 EPOS, we can connect here. We'll see that it shows up here. If we click home, so we've got our pin in. And then this will reach 100%. And there we have our mower on our main screen. We'll then move on to the reference station. So if we click continue here, our reference station should show up. That's the one we want. So if we click our reference station, we're ready to go. The last component is to pair the machine to the charge station in which we'll create a docking point. So in this case, I've gone for two meters just so we can get a nice clear view of the sky. We can see the reference station on top of the roof, the charging station just next to the house, the docking point and the machine. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be including a lawn, a stay out zone, and also a transport path back to the charge station. So for this, we want to drive to our start point. 
which will be over here. So once we've reached our start point for creating our lawn, um, we want to remember that we go in a clockwise fashion. Um, so if we go ahead and drop the waypoint here, on a nice straight run like this, you can just drop one point here and one point at the end. So now the lawn is starting to curve. What we want to do now is drop more waypoints just to fill that curve. So now we're approaching the end because we've got a nice straight point. We can just go ahead and press done and now automatically link this point to our starting point. Created that work area. Let's review what we've got at the moment. So we've got the reference station, charge station, docking point, mower and the work area itself. Um, you can create up to 20 work areas, but in this case, we'll just only be using this demo area. So if we click the work area, we'll, we'll be presented with a list of components that you can fine tune. So we've got a 287 square meter work area. You can turn it active and inactive. You've got the schedule. Uh, we've got the cutting height, which we'll adjust to minimum. And then if we hit save, we've got the pattern. So for this, we like lines here. So you can adjust your lines. Um, if you pull the orange circle to a waypoint, it will snap on. And you can have it mowing in that direction. We've also got irregular, checkerboard, and triangle. And if we hit back, save our changes. Then we've got edit which we'll be coming to in a moment on how you can adjust your work areas, pushing boundaries inwards and outwards, adding waypoints and deleting them. And then we've got rename. So we'll call this one demo, save the changes. And then you can delete your work areas. So now that we're in the demo work area, the elephant in the room is clearly these trees. Uh, that we don't want the mower going anywhere near. So I'm gonna create a stay out zone around that which stops the mower from going in there. Because this stay out zone is gonna be circular, we wanna drop more waypoints than less and we wanna make sure we're going anti-clockwise. So that's the stay out zone created we've created our stay out zone we can see that it is now sitting inside of our work area if we go ahead and click on the stay out zone we'll be given a variety of options so first off you can see how big it is so 30 square meters you can make it active or inactive just like the work areas um, and if you want to adjust it um, you can push the stay out zones out more you can go all the way up to 500 centimeters and then you can adjust it vice versa and push it in 500 centimeters as well. Properties, there will be more stay out zones than others. So it's important to remember that you give your stay out zone a unique name just so that you can remember what it is and where it is. Then you can also delete that stay out zone if it's no longer there. One of the main things that I get asked when I'm at a customer's house is the edging. How do we fine tune it? And to fine tune this, what we can do is we can edit waypoints. We can push them inwards and outwards. So in our case, we want to push the boundary outwards just to get rid of all that edging there. So with a hard surface like this, there will always be a 15 centimeter gap that the mower cannot reach. Um, so in this case, you can either weed eat or spray like we've done. You won't have to do any edging if you've got a flat surface in level with the lawn, such as this. This is achieved by installing the machine onto the flat surface, so your waypoints will be on the flat surface, not on the lawn, just so that the mower can go over and do that edging for you. Now that we've made our work area, we've made our stay out zone, we want to join all of this to the charge station. So how we do it? With a transport path. So we drive the mower a meter inside of the work area. We put our first waypoint down and then we drive it about a meter outside of the work area, drop another waypoint 
and then we want to be head on in front of our docking point. You don't have to drive all the way up to the docking point. You just press done, name your path, and then it will automatically join up to your charge station. Okay, now that we've got everything in place, we're ready to mow. So now that we've finished it, um, we want to recap everything we've got and what we've mapped. So we've got the reference station set up on the roof, the charge station just next to the house, the mower's docking point, the mower, the transport path to the work area, the work area, and the stay out zone. So now if I press mower and play, it should go off and start mowing what we've, what we've created. And as you can see now, our mower is happily chipping away at the lawn. Um, but because these are autonomous, they will just finish the lawn and then park themselves up. Or if we want to park it up now, we can just hit home on the phone and then you can choose how long you want for. So I'm going to choose until further notice. So he'll then drive to the transport path and then head back to the charge station.